Hey, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to talk about the top tips for recovery. Now I know that everybody wants to talk about intensity and exercises and the flashy shit, but in reality, recovery is key. So let's get to it. The first step to recovery is that you need to be prepared for the workout. And what does that mean? That means that you need to be either eating correctly or taking the proper supplements in order to be hydrated before you even train. Now there's a couple things you can utilize. You can utilize more salt in your food. You can utilize a buffered salt tablet. You can utilize things like Pinacarb that, that ATP Labs makes that has some electrolytes in it with some, some sp uh, special carbohydrates. But the point is, is that you need to be prepared before the workout even begins. So I find that sometimes recovery is a lack of preparation before you even train, okay? That's step one. Step two, you need to be in a recovery mode right when you get done working out. What does this mean? This means you need to be going into a relaxed state. You need to be pushing the recovery to happen and recuperate yourself faster. And how do you do this? Well, one, you go into a relaxed setting. Two, you make sure that you have a meal directly ready or something to eat right when you get done training. Usually what I like to do is right when I get done training, I'm replenishing carbohydrates and then one hour later, I'm starting the protein uh, issue. Now I do different before workouts. Before workouts, I'm preloading protein. And then after workout, I'm really hitting in those carbohydrates because in my opinion, your body's more receptive to using carbs correctly post-workout as long as your diet's clean. Okay, so now what, what that means is that the end of the workout, you're basically telling your body to refuel and repair. So if you go work out and then you're like, eh, I'm gonna go run some chores or some errands, and then you're busy for two to three hours before you even eat, what are you telling your body? You're telling your body that you really don't want muscle, and you're telling your body that it needs to be efficient with how many calories it burns, which actually makes you weaker. So you ever notice that you kind of eat what you want within reason? Sometimes you feel a lot stronger than other times when you're caloric depleted, you don't feel as strong. Well, that's why I'm not a huge fan of fasting. I'm not a huge fan of fasting pre-workouts, post-workouts, or really any time. I'm really a fan of eating clean all throughout the day, and then you know, there's no need to fast. So the point is, is that if you're trying to recover, make sure that your food is in right when you get done working out. Tip three, do not overtrain. Now, this is hard because overtraining can mean many things for many different people, depending on what position or time of year or time of just your chronological age or training age is. So what does this mean? This means follow some direct rules. Rule one, try not to train at one bout over an hour. Why? Because your catabolic system starts to really kick in, your anabolic system starts to fall out. What does this mean? This means you're kind of spinning your wheels when you're training. If you're not training dense enough to get everything done in an hour, then guarantee that your rest periods are too long and you're, you're resting too much in between your, your sets, either top sets or down sets or accessories. There's no reason that if I can get all my workouts done in between 50 and 65 minutes, that the average person can't get theirs done in around 60 minutes as well. So the point is, is that get it done in a unique time. The next thing is don't work on too many areas in one workout. What I like to think of is I pick two areas. So if I'm doing say dynamic effort where I'm working on getting insanely fast, that day, I'm also working on volume or hypertrophy, but I'm not working on necessarily strength. So what that means is that the repetitions are higher, the tempos might be slower, things of that nature, but I am not really working on maximal efforts, meaning that I'm not doing any heavy fives on speed day. Now reverse that around on max day, when I get done going heavy, I'm not doing anything for speed. I'm doing things for either hypertrophy, tempos, or volume. And the reason is that I only work on two different areas in one workout, meaning that if I do max effort, I do, I do some hypertrophy. Or if I do dynamic effort, I do hypertrophy. Now notice what I'm saying is that I'm separating the neurological drive from the muscular system. And what that means is that if I'm doing hypertrophy work, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm wearing out my CNS, but guarantee that if I'm doing dynamic and max on the same day, I'm probably tearing up my CNS, which is also a reason that I don't believe in doing full body workouts. I believe that full body workouts tend to overtrain people faster and you really don't have enough time to focus on particular muscle groups. So these are three areas where I think the top tips for recovery become a huge factor in getting better, right? Pre-plan your workouts, 
post plan your nutrition and don't overtrain and watch your gains go through the roof. Now, if you have any questions or you need somebody to help you with this, go on to online coaching or at the very minimum, go to winningstrength.com and download some manuals and start educating yourself on how to train smarter, longer, and safer.